In this video, we're going to talk about data quality. We're going to look at different dimensions of data quality, and we're also going to apply some of these dimensions on a small business case. These 16 dimensions of data quality come from an ACM article by Leo Pepino and colleagues. They show how data quality, which is the ability to satisfy the information needs of the consumer, can be measured from several different dimensions. These, some of these dimensions, depending on the information need of the consumer, may be more or less relevant. For example, if you're interested in measuring uh, um, or capturing clickstream data for monitoring website traffic that you want to use in an algorithm to determine optimal product placement of your products on your website, timeliness of data, meaning that you can get the data as soon as it occurs, is extremely important. Whereas if you're building uh, reports on year over year historical sales analysis, then what was sold yesterday is not so important. So the timeliness is less important. Um, let's look at three of these dimensions. So free of error means the extent to which data is correct and reliable. Let's imagine that I'm interested in calculating the average height of my students and I want to include myself and I'm 178 centimeters tall. So if I open up an Excel sheet and I start recording the height of each individual and then I reach uh, where I want to uh, put mine in and I hit one seven, then if I save that, that's going to show up as a uh, data quality issue in my data because I uh, incorrectly put in 17 centimeters instead of the actual 170 meters centimeters that I am tall. The, the second uh, dimension that you see here is the appropriate amount and that means that you should have a volume of data that is appropriate for the task at hand. So if I want to calculate the average height of my students, I shouldn't only include the three first students that show up, I should actually include many of my students. So if I have 100, I need to record an appropriate amount of that in order to be able to calculate the average height. Then the third dimension that you see here is the one uh, called completeness, and it is the extent to which data is not missing. So if I get data from a source system, I want a large part of the data that I'm going to use in my data product or in my report to actually be there. I want it to be not missing. So uh, let's try with, with these three in mind, let's try to move on to, to a small case. This is the case of Cookie Cutter Incorporated. They sell cookie cutters on la, 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 la. This is the case of Cookie Cutter Incorporated. They sell cookie cutters online and they're actually having quite a lot of success for only being in business for five years. And they are on a journey of a data driven growth strategy and considering if they should build a data warehouse and build data products to improve their business. But before they dedicate any sort of resources into that, they would like for us to look at the current data quality that they have. This is a sample of their website. You can see they have many different products. They're all cookie cutters. They have different prices. They have different ratings, a different number of customers bought them. And the textual descriptions also differ. Cookie Cutter Incorporated's management uh, tell you that they're mainly interested in answering these three different questions. They want to know if the big cookie cutters or the more smaller cookie cutters are more popular because if the bigger ones are more popular they want to extend the assortment on their website of the bigger ones they also are curious as to whether higher ratings on the products mean that they sell more goods and at the same time they also need to be able to determine what the average price of a single cookie cutter is Let's go back to their website again and let's let's recall the three dimensions. So we had the free of error, we had the appropriate amount and the completeness. And now let's look at this. So if we look at the customers who bought this item, we can see that some of the items have been bought by not a lot of customers, whereas some of them have been 
bought by many customers. And then if we recall that one of the questions that Cookie Cutter Incorporated was interested in was knowing whether or not higher ratings led to buying more products, then we can say that most likely we do not have the appropriate amount of data here. Because for example, if we look in the lower right hand corner, then the product with the highest rating is also one that only two customers bought. So only two customers can have put in this rating. And if we look above that, we can also see that one of the items bought by the most amount doesn't even have a rating. So it's an empty rating. There, there are five stars, none of them are colored. And even if we look in the middle on, on the lower row, we also see that there is a rating missing. So there's something with completeness on this. And uh, further with this uh, free of error, we can see that uh, one of the products is listed as being 200 euros, which is not very believable. And further, one of them has an interval and is in dollars. So there's some, there is some data quality issue here. What can we do about that? Well, we have four simple strategies. The first one is we can do nothing. We can build a data warehouse. We can start building reports and we can start building dashboards and other data products with the data that they have because the data that they have is the data that they have. It might be true. We can also decide to fix it at the source. So we can go back in into the uh, database or the, the web shop and actually change these things so that it's correct. We can also decide to fix any issue in the data warehouse by simply overriding them. So if we know that, oops, the, the 200 euros must be a mistake, it should have been 20 euros, we can just go in and, and override that. Another option is that we, on the data warehouse, flag the inconsistent data. But how can we decide which of these uh, four simple strategies that we might choose to go with? Well, again, if we uh, go back to the article by Pepino and colleagues that I had in the beginning of this video, we can look at the framework that they have for um, dealing with data quality assessment in practice. First, we should assess the data, either using subjective assessment like we just did, or um, objective criteria, so we can define how many errors is allowed or how complete should the data be to be included, and we can have metrics for that and then choose based on that. But once we do discover that there is an issue, we should look at the root cause of that issue. So is it a data entry issue or is it a data integration issue? So if you look, and if you recall back then the, the, the missing, the missing, um, ratings on the very uh, highly bought product maybe maybe that uh, that data somehow didn't uh, arrive in on the web shop maybe it came from from some sort of api or some kind of other source and we didn't integrate it correctly and that's why now we can't fetch the data correctly then based on based on the the issue at hand and and the relevance of the dimension for for the information consumer and the identified issue so the cause of this data quality problem, we should determine a cause of action. And if we look into the Kimball book, we also have some general recommendations on data quality from Kimball. Kimball's recommendations on data quality is that we should ensure a high level of commitment to data quality culture. We should also make the executive level drive any re-engineering processes if we need to change the business processes that are generating our data. If the issues that we have in our data quality is related to the data entry environment, so if we have some guy entering the price of our products into our uh, tables, then we should either hire someone more qualified, we should uh, give him more time to enter it, we should hire a new guy to check it, we should uh, spend money to improve the data entry environment. Maybe we can even improve on the interface in which we do enter the data so that that has some kind of checks. Are you sure that you want to put in uh, this number that exceeds the max that I already know, or some kind of rules? We could also, if the data is, is, is of bad quality due to the application integrations, we could spend money on improving that. We could raise awareness and cooperation cooperation between departments to improve the data quality or uh, the final one which is actually to go out and measure the data quality. 
If we measure data quality, we can also manage it because we can see when it starts dropping, we can see uh, what kind of initiatives that increase the data quality. We can see which departments are good at ensuring data quality. We can actually know what drives data quality in our business.